Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'm Dr. Morales. In today's video segment, we're going to be addressing the caregivers for atrial fibrillation. And so if you have a spouse or parent or a loved one that you take care of that has atrial fibrillation, uh, this video is meant for you to help give you tips on how to help your loved one take care of their atrial fibrillation. Want to start off by giving all those caregivers a thank you. Being a caregiver for somebody with complicated uh, medical conditions, including atrial fibrillation, requires a lot of work. It can be very stressful. Um, and sometimes you don't get a thank you. So I wanted to say thank you to those caregivers who take their time uh, to really help out their loved one with taking care of their medical conditions. And thank you for being here to learn more about your loved one's atrial fibrillation. And if you think that this video is worthwhile, you think that this is something that other people can learn from, please put a like or comment or share because that's how these ideas grow and we can show these videos to more people. So for people who are caregivers, what tips can I give for someone to help manage the, a loved one's atrial fibrillation? So the first tip that I would give would be understanding and recognizing the signs of a stroke. As I've said in several other video segments, the risk of stroke is the most devastating consequence of having atrial fibrillation. Even with appropriate medical therapy, risk of stroke never becomes zero. So understanding the risk of stroke and the signs of a stroke are very important for caregivers. There's a very commonly used acronym uh, called FAST, F-A-S-T, to help people to understand and recognize the signs of a stroke. And each one of those letters stands for something. F stands for face. So if you notice that one side of a person's face is weaker than another or their smile is not symmetric or they're drooling, uh, that can be signs of a stroke. The A stands for arm. So if one of the, they're unable to move one side of their arms or they're able to control the motions of one side of their arms, uh, which can also pertain to their legs as well, but the acronym mostly refers to their arms, that can also be signs of a stroke. The S stands for speech. Speech would be the inability to talk or inability to talk uh, correctly or even saying clearly the, the wrong words, uh, uh, which, are, which, which can also be signs of a stroke. Uh, and the last letter is T, and that stands for time. The faster you get medical attention when there are signs of a stroke, the better the recovery options can be. So the first and probably most important thing for a caregiver to be aware of is to understand and recognize the signs of a stroke and to seek urgent medical attention. But what are other things that a caregiver should be aware of for patients that have atrial fibrillation? The first one, I, the, second, the second one I would say would probably be understanding signs of progression of atrial fibrillation. Uh, your loved one may not really feel their heart rate going fast. Uh, they may just uh, notice that they're not able to do as much as they want to or you may notice they're not able to do as much as they used to. Uh, a lot of times the patients won't necessarily complain or describe uh, anything that they're feeling and it's actually the caregiver or the loved one who actually notices they're more short of breath than they used to be. They are not even just talking, they, feel, they sound more short of breath. They don't have the same energy they used to have and that can all be signs of a progression of atrial fibrillation. And so it's important to discuss those symptoms with your doctor to understand if there are signs of progression or they're having more frequent atrial fibrillation uh, to be able to better manage the condition. Because shortness of breath and fatigue uh, can be a signs of just being an AFib or it can be a sign of the heart rate going very fast as well. And so it's important to discuss these symptoms with your doctor so that uh, the AFib can be uh, managed as, as best as possible. The third thing that I would say would be very important for a caregiver to understand is the medications they're on and the risks of the medications that your loved one is on. Probably one of the most important first category of medications are blood thinning medications. Blood thinners are very important for reducing risk of stroke and they can be very effective, but there are also blood thinning medications. And so there's also risks for bleeding and anemia. And if your loved one is older, uh, the 
older the person is, not only is the risk of stroke higher, but also the risk of bleeding is also higher as well. And so sometimes bleeding can be uh, very subtle. You may not see somebody just grossly bleeding. Sometimes it can be something as subtle as just noticing a change in your stool color when you go use the bathroom and it may be noticing either something more dark or black and that can be a sign of subtle blood loss. But also things such as fatigue or dizziness can be a sign of anemia which happens chronically when people are on blood thinners. You may have very slow steady blood loss that over time builds up and then when you start developing symptoms you're actually fairly anemic. So when somebody's on blood thinners having routine blood work to make sure that there's no signs of uh, anemia developing is a crucial feature of managing uh, somebody's atrial fibrillation. Also along with medications is know what medicines that they're on and know which ones are have particular side effects or things that are dangerous or need to be monitored very closely. Uh, the two that come to my mind are digoxin and amiodarone. Uh, first, digoxin is a very commonly used medication for the management of atrial fibrillation. Uh, it's been around for well over 20 years now and it can be effective in some uh, situations. Um, but the side effects can build up. Uh, you can get toxic levels of the drug, especially if you have uh, abnormal kidney function. And there's even been some more recent studies that using digoxin can actually increase mortality. So this is one of these medications that if you need it and you don't have any other options, it can be very helpful. Uh, but if you are on it, you need to make sure your blood levels are okay of the dr drug medication and to take as little as, as possible. And if you have the option to get off of it, then that should be the, one of the first medications that you take off. Another drug that has a lot of significant side effects are, is amiodarone. Amiodarone is another very commonly used medication to manage atrial fibrillation which tends to build up a lot of side effects but it tends to, a lot of them tend to build up subtly over a long period of time when people are on it for uh, several months or even years. And they can develop shortness of breath or eye problems or nerve problems, kind of a weakness in their gait. Uh, and there's a variety, a long list of side effects that can come from amiodarone. It's used commonly because it can be a very effective uh, medication, but it does have a long list of uh, side effects. So if you're the caregiver for someone who has atrial fibrillation, always address the medications with their, with their doctor to see whether they're still needed and whether they're being monitored for signs of side effects from the medication, whether that be anemia from blood thinners or, or side effects from other medications for atrial fibrillation like amiodarone or digoxin. So it's very key to discuss these medications with your doctor and make sure there's an ongoing discussion to see if these are the right medications for your loved one. Okay. But again, thank you for all the effort and all the time and dedication that you put for taking care of your loved one. And thank you for educating yourself about their conditions by visiting here at Dr. AFib. Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'll see you next time.